Greetings Warhammer Fantasy fans, how are we today? It's been a little while since I took the mic and did a video and I've come up with a topic that I think will be an interesting one for you. We're going to look at the Spectral Doppelganger spell, which has been doing the rounds on all of the Facebook groups at the moment with people looking at how best to take advantage of this. And I've come up with a couple of builds myself that I think will make a hell of a difference to one faction or another. So let's hit those titles and then we'll get right into it. So, right off the bat, what is Spectral Doppelganger? Well, it's a spell from the Illusion Law, and um, it's an assailment spell. Casting value of 9+, plus, which is, you know, a higher side, but still doable, uh, and only works in combat. But what really does it do? Well, the description is this. Like the surface of a mirror struck a mighty blow, the Illusionist's image fractures, revealing myriad Doppelganger likenesses. So, essentially, in combat, they are going to do shadow clones uh, if you were a Naruto fan for example but um, multiple doppelgangers coming out and all hitting the unit they're engaged in combat with whether that unit is a regiment or a single character um, so a single enemy unit the caster is engaged in combat with suffers 2d6 hits that's hits not rolls to hit but automatic hits resolved using the characteristics and special rules of the caster and any weapon they carry well <clears throat> That's great. That, I mean, it's not so great if you are a wizard, because wizards are not normally kitted out for combat. But what if you could have a character become a wizard, um, who would not normally be, and then give them all the means to absolutely own somebody with this spell. So we'll take a look. The first people I've looked at are the High Elves. So that's where we're gonna go next. Let's take a look and see what we can do with a High Elf character. So currently everyone is talking about putting your High Elf character on a dragon as big and as star-like a dragon as you can afford and just munching through everything. But I'm taking a different approach here. I am going to put a Prince um, on the battlefield on foot. Um, <clears throat> now, the prince, in his own right, pretty decent. I mean, movement five, fair enough, that's elves. Weapon skill and ballistic skill of seven. Strength of four. Uh, toughness of wounds of three. Initiative six. Tax four. Leadership ten. 130 points. Uh, what else do they have going for them? Ithilimar weapons. Strike first. Strike th first is pretty good. And the Valor of Ages for those rerolls. But... Um, if we were to dive in a little bit more here, we could give them the Lawmaster option uh, from the Elven Honours. Now, the Lawmaster option is great. 35 points is a lot, but High Elf Lords only. Um, and characters with the Lawmaster Elven Honour cannot be mounted. So no dragons, no horses, no griffins, no eagles, nothing. However, they are a level 1 wizard and knows one randomly generated spell from one of the following laws of magic battle magic elementalism high magic or illusion um so illusion is what we want there that's the important thing uh, they may be equipped with a sword of hoth which is an absolutely glorious weapon it is two-handed giant sword that does not have strike last gives you two to your strength and two off of your armor save so AP minus two, strength plus two, and um, no hindrance to uh, when you strike, which is a glorious thing. It's also a magic weapon, actually, so you're doing magical attacks. You get that for free. You don't get to take any other uh, non-magical weapons, but you get that. You also gain the Athilomar armor, Lilith, Lilith, Lilith's blessing, and the Law of Safari special rules. Now, the Law of Safari, not so important, but um, Lilith's blessing is quite good, because you may re-roll a single failed casting roll once per turn. Uh, and the Athilomar armor is also very important, because with a model with this special rule always re-rolls one when making uh, dangerous terrain tests. However, a wizard with this special rule we may wear, eh, may wear armor without penalty so our high elf prince can wear full plate armor and cast this spell in combat um now 
this character with this um, Elven Honor may also join a unit of Swordmasters of Hoth, so that's a good idea to give them some protection and make for one hell of a hard-hitting um, unit. Uh, but I have spent a mere 271 points on this character. Um, I have gone for full plate armor for a 4 plus save, because you can, because of the Ithilamar armor. Um, they have got the Sword of Hoth for plus 2 strength, which means they uh, make attacks at strength 6, with an AP of minus 2. Um, and then to round them out with the magic items, they have taken a law familiar, which allows them to choose a spell rather than randomly generate a spell. And that's key because we want to take the spectral doppelganger. Um, they're also taking a talisman of protection, a seed of rebirth and a power scroll. So that is a five plus ward save and a five plus regeneration save on top of their four plus armor save. So that is a decent whack of survivability that they've got for this character on foot uh, and the power scroll giving them a uh, one shot at getting an extra dice rolled on the casting uh, roll is handy because as a level one caster they're going to need a little bit of help from time to time to get that over the line but they're a great character because i mean with four attacks at strength six ap minus two they are and, and striking first they're going to decimate whoever they fight anyway but the fact that they can cast this as an assailment spell um, and then make 2d6 attacks that auto hit at strength 6 AP minus 2 is just magnificent. What a thing to have to face in combat and you charge in knowing that you're already facing the Swordmasters who are a tough proposition anyway and then this guy just bam, there you go. Between 2 and 12 of you are really in a perilous situation right now. I think that's fantastic. And then the Swordmasters will mop up whatever you've got. So what an investment there. Just one character, 271 points, a different way of looking at it. Perfect. Now, who else can we look at? <clears throat> okay, so the next and really the only other option to do this ability whilst choosing to take the spell is the Vampire Counts. And unlike the Elves where the dragon is normally the way forward. In this case, um, look at the vampire cats. We're going to put him on a dragon. Uh, and the reason we're going to do that is because it's quite an expensive combo to pull off. If you pay 30 points for the law familiar and then you want to spend another, say, 55 points on a weapon that is going to make a hell of a difference in combat, you want to have an armor save. Now, because we are making our vampire count a level 3 wizard through his vampiric powers, um, it's really important to give him an armor save, and we can't afford something like the magic item for the vampire counts, which is the flayed hauberk. So instead, we're going to put him on a giant massive zombie dragon uh, and spend uh, 600 points overall. But my goodness, this guy is a beast. Uh, and it's been said that the vampire lord on a zombie dragon probably can't stand up to a elven prince or a chaos lord on the chaos dragon. Uh, but I think with this combo, perhaps they can. So, uh, just to start off, a vampire count, uh, weapon skill 7, ballistic skill 5, movement 6 as well, they're quick. Um, strength and toughness 5, wounds 3, initiative 6, attacks 4, leadership of only 8, but we'll ignore the leadership, it's not important in this situation. However, if we put our lord on a zombie dragon, toughness goes up to 6, wounds goes up by 5, so that is toughness 6 and 8 wounds, so you are staying around, and because because we're on the dragon and our vampire count is not wearing any armor, we can use the save that comes with the dragon according to the rules because it is higher than the vampire count save and the dragon comes with draconic scales which count as full plate so that's a 4 plus for you. So toughness 6 and 8 wounds uh, is not bad at all but we can make that even better. We can add then uh, our vampire powers, we can add the uh, master of the black arts which makes them the... Um, level 3 from a level 2 wizard, uh, but then we add Curse of the Revenant to get an extra wound still. So now we are on 9 wounds. And let's be honest, um, toughness 6 and 9 wounds is a lot. So that's pretty good. That puts us in a nice position. Um, 
And then if we take our Law Familiar, which gives us the uh, ability to choose from the illusion exactly what we want, we can then give ourselves a magic weapon to go with it. And we can take the Sword of Kings. And good grief, this is lovely. So our strength goes up with the Sword of Kings uh, by one. So that takes our strength to strength six for natural attacks. Um, AP of minus one, you get magical attacks and you get the killing blow uh, as well, which is a fantastic special rule. And what makes the Sword of Kings really good is, is that the killing blow triggers not on a natural roll of a six to wound, but on a five to wound. So if we're doing 2d6 hits and then killing blow which um, essentially killing blow any um, troop type infantry or cavalry or subtype thereof um, that is struck with a killing blow are not permitted armor or regeneration saves against it only ward saves if they suffer an unsaved wound from a killing blow it loses all of its remaining wounds so that is a character killer now we are rolling 2d6 um, uh, hits uh, once we've got our 2d6 hits we're rolling to wound we're rolling to wound on a strength of six which is pretty damn good uh, but of the strength six um any natural five or natural six is a killing blow which drops out regeneration and armor saves for anyone they're fighting if you're up against a character all of a sudden you've lost two of your three saves you're down to your ward save of five plus for what could be say you'd taken ten um 10 hits if you've done so well and rolled five and a, and a five or something thereof all of a sudden you've taken 10 hits and rolled 10 dice of those 10 dice one third so between three and four are going to be killing blows and if you've only got a ward save of a five plus that's three of them you're only going to save one of them so you are going to die um which is just brutal um it's much more expensive than the elf um, it is, as I mentioned, 600 points, but he is your vampire general, and you want him to survive. So you want to give him every option, but also you want him to do a lot of damage. So I think this is a, uh, um, a really potent way of making use of your, your leader. Obviously, you've got to keep him alive because things go horribly wrong once he's dead. Um, but it's a good way of doing it. Uh, and so, yeah, along with the elves who can do it for the cheap if they want and, and make a really interesting um, killer foot soldier, this is a way to do it on a dragon and have something mobile that gets around the battle and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other dragon wielders. Um, and I think it's it, it's what I would do, certainly. Um, it's a lot of points to sink, but it's it's the core of your force, and it's, it's exactly what you want. It's all about the vampire. When you're a vampire counts army, everything else, even lesser vampires are thralls. It's all about the one in charge. They are nothing if not um, an individual who thinks only of themselves. So, yeah, I'd put them on the biggest dragon possible and give them the ability to just turn up and doppelgang themselves and make sure whoever they are fighting is dead, done, finished. Nice and simple. So, yeah, marvellous. Uh, there's one more which we'll look at, which is, it's just a curveball. It's not necessarily a given, and I don't think many would choose it, but it's the only other option I can see where it's worth a swing. And then here we are for the final. Now, this one is a Skaven Grey Seer. Um, one of the only other um, ways of taking uh, illusion magic on a character where you can give them enough survivability and offensive potential um, is with a Grey Seer on a Screaming Bell. Um, and you can give them a uh, law familiar which is fantastic not everyone gets that uh, well a lot of people get that but not it's not worthwhile giving it to get this spell for many of the other races uh, but then you take your illusion magic you've got all of the support and impact hits and just all of the monstrous fantastic hitting power of the screaming bell not to mention the special effects it gets and uh, you've got all of that and then You've got this Grace here as a level four wizard, so it's going to have a high chance of getting this spell off. Uh, they've got the Law Familiar, so they've chosen their spells well from Illusion. And then they've got a Weeping Blade. So that is 2d6 hits only at strength, which is a shame. But um, you can't have high strength all the time. I suppose you could potentially look at giving themselves uh, something to make them stronger. But I like the Weeping Blade because... 
uh, 2d6, uh, they are magical attacks, which is grand. Uh, they are poisoned attacks, uh, although realistically poisoned attacks don't do much because that's on a roll to hit. But I mean, in, in normal combat, that'll be handy uh, for auto wounds. But in this case, it's the uh, AP of minus two and the multiple wounds D3 that you get. So that's 2d6 hits, uh, strength with AP minus two, magical hits, uh, multiple wounds D3, which means potentially if you were rolling incredibly, each hit could do three wounds. Um, and then all of a sudden you're cutting down the big infantry you're, or you're chopping down the uh, multiple wound heavy infantries uh, or you're just decimating characters uh, and again you'll be a target as a grey seer and a screaming bell because uh, you're going to need to be gotten rid of as, as a focal point for the army uh, but as I say it's a curveball because really the other way you could do things is you could not take a law familiar you really wanted to do this and take a risk you could drop the law familiar save yourself those 30 points and then try your very best to instead of taking a weeping blade take a fell blade and hope you draw as one of your four spells the spectral doppelganger because with a fell blade designed to kill Nagash himself, a 100 point magic sword. You're putting all of your eggs in this basket. Uh, but you hit it to strength 10. Uh, with multiple wound D3 and magical attacks, there is no armor piercing value because it is not applicable because there are no armor, ward, or regeneration saves permitted against wounds caused by this weapon. Um, it is a beast. However, during the command phase of their turn, the wielder of the fell blade must roll a d6 on a natural roll of a one. They lose a single wound. Well, to me, that's worth the risk because if you can get this and you can start doing 2d6 strength 10 hits with no armor saves whatsoever and multiple wounds d3, it doesn't matter what you're hitting. It is going to die. Um... As I say, it's specialising your grace here a little bit. It's 500 points spent on essentially making this into either something that everyone is going to ignore and leave alone or something that everyone is going to come and try and take down, at which point you are going to smash them because you've got all of the backed up power of the uh, Screaming Bell anyway with all of the uh, people dragging it and the Rat Ogres. And, and then you've got this... <laughs> Gracie on top who suddenly just doppelgangs himself out to up to 12 times 2 to 12 but most likely somewhere in the middle uh, you are going to just be hitting and hitting and, hitting, and they're going to just whoever it is who's coming is going to fall to pieces so yeah it's an interesting way of doing it I like it a lot um, and I may try it when I finally finish getting my Skaven force together because I've been distracted I'm building a high elf force a Bretonian force and a Skaven force and I keep flitting from one to the other I'm painting and making Bretonians at the moment we'll wait there but when I finally get the, Breton the Skaven together we'll give it a go so there we have it how about it lots and lots of choices for you from those three different factions and I think if you are a player of one of those three factions I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts in this what do you think about it is there something I could do better? Is there a better way to utilize this spell than I've mentioned previously? Are there any better alternative spells that we could use? Um, certainly, I think this is one of the better ones. So, yeah, do let me know in the comments down below. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. In the meantime, please do leave a like and a subscribe. Um, hit the notification button and share this with your friends. It's really important for us that people, you know... Uh, are, are coming on board because it really helps us out with making more content all the time and speaking of more content if you would look up here you will see uh, that there is a whole playlist of the old world content that will feature all manner of things that I hope will be of interest to you so why don't you take a look at that and in the meantime thanks for watching